Hey guys, I am in sunny Southern California, hanging out with the founder of this electric bike company over here. Uh, this is Bob Anderson. Hi there. How are you, man? I'm very good, Court. Thanks. Thank you so much for bringing like multiple additions down here. We've got several colors. We've even got your step through. We've got your high step. And this was made possible in part because Mark Johnson from Recycles over here. Hi there. That we're near your shop and you carry this bike, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've had a little bit of time to hang out with both of you guys. I thought I would just jump in and do my quick overview, but I might defer to you because there is so much going on with this Very bike. Good. So many options. Like I was really impressed. I was really impressed when I, you know, it just seemed like it kept going and going, everything I learned. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on the white one because I think it stands out really nicely. There are those two models we talked about. This step through is going to be a little bit easier to you know step onto like that. Um, I think traditionally it's kind of like oh his and hers or whatever, but I've become more a fan of these over time. The only challenge with a rear rack mounted battery on a step through like this is that there is some frame flex. We'll probably see that when I ride a little bit later, but the weight is, it's its kind of well distributed because it comes with this awesome basket, um, aluminum alloy frame, steel mesh insert, so stuff won't fall through the cracks. I actually think it's one of the nicer baskets I've ever seen. It has an integrated light on the front with two really bright LEDs. Integrated meaning it runs off the main battery pack. And there's a second light built right into the back of this battery box. Okay, so lots of safety going on here. I believe, um, Bob, is that a reflective stitching, like the little lightning bolt? No. Okay, I, had my, I was like, man, because yeah, it looks idea, so <laughs> bright. It's really nice. Yeah. The white color, I'm always calling this out too. It's a little bit more visible. So if you're riding, you've got a nice visual footprint, but you've got the lights built in and everything. Um, of course, the standard reflectors. As far as colors go, you know, there's black, there's white, there's orange and then there's also red and they're all glossy they look really nice these are of course purpose built you've got the cables and everything really nice wrapping job here they're kind of tucked in and and then internally internally routed so you know you can still access them a little bit if you have some upgrades service to do the one point of vulnerability i would caution about is is this axle right here you can see that the cable's coming out through this if the bike tipped over you wouldn't want this to get snagged or bent or something keep an eye on that Note that the, you know, the kickstand is sort of this oversized adjustable one. It's on the left-hand side, and I think that's, you know, if the bike tips, have it tip that way. Um, but they're, they're pretty large. You can see it's got these oversized cruiser-style handlebars, comfort, real leather grips with lockers. These are a lot nicer than some of the generic ones I see out there. And I think that's, that's a theme I see all the way through this bike. Really nice saddle. I was mentioning the little fun little lightning bolt earlier. Real leather, again, rubber bumpers. Check this out. This is the SR Suntour NCX suspension seat post, and that comes stock. And a lot of this stuff's color matched, okay? So you've got silver right here, silver pedals, silver cranks, silver bars, adjustable angle stem. And then we come over here, we've got kind of some, you know, silver going on, but all the other touch points are, are black, like the grips and everything. And then, you know, over here, you can see a little bit of blending going on, but also carrying that black theme all the way through. I thought that was cool. And one of the other bikes we were looking at earlier had black all the way through and the black fenders and the black chain guard. So, you know, it's, it's neat to see something that just looks polished like this. And I think one of the options that we were talking about earlier is people can pay a little bit more and maybe have their company logos or, you know, some fancy stuff done. Right, so we've done a lot of branding, this tube all open here to company name for potential write-offs, not a tech expert, but <laughs> yeah, um, with that or uh, people's favorite football teams, they've gone and put things on the bikes before. Neat, and, neat, know, yeah. That might be a Raiders bike right there as an example. Right, we were on our way over here, we were like Raiders. Uh, yeah. And the reflective piece, I wanna call out that these little uh, mud flaps, I believe those are reflective. Those, are, those yes, yeah, okay, yeah, great, yeah. cool. We got the reflective. Um, coming back into some of the hardware, these are a little bit unique. These are the Wellgo aluminum alloy platform pedals, but these ones have rubber on them versus the big spikes. You know, I've slipped off and kind of cut my shins before, but I also like the larger platform, something that's really solid and feels stiff. This is kind of a compromise and, and I like it. It works pretty well. We've got a, a single sprocket in the rear. I believe it's 52 teeth up front, 16 or maybe even 18 in the rear. Uh, earlier, Bob was saying they, they did 18 for a customer in San Francisco because there's more climbing going on. This is a heavier bike. Uh, it, it, we're, we're looking at like 74 and a half pounds. 
that is definitely on the heavier side, but part of that is because you have a huge battery that this comes with. This is like 10 and a half pounds all on its own. It is removable. You can charge it on or off the bike, which is really nice, but it's heavy because it's like 48 volts. I think we were saying like 18.5 amp hours, but effective use is 16 amp hours because it's got this really unique sort of charge. It, it stops it from like overcharging. If you think about some of the electric cars, they have really smart battery management systems that keep keep the batteries from getting strained and they last much longer. And that's part of what allows them to have a really awesome warranty. Can you comment on the warranty real quick? Yeah, so on this battery, it's a Samsung 33G, which is simply means uh, most batteries out there, 2,600 milliamp. This is 2,800 milliamp. Okay. So it's more, energy, more density. energy density. Yeah. Exactly. And then a smart BMS that regulates it all the time. And then each cell is can go up to 42, which most people do. We 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 charge it to or 41.125. Mm -hmm. So about 85 percent. Yeah. And which gives us now double the cycles. So thousand to twelve hundred cycles, which allows us to give a three-year warranty on three-year warranty on the back. I mean, that's phenomenal. Yeah. I, you know, and Samsung's a company that I've heard of. The motor, this is an internally geared, uh, you know, hub motor. It, it looks kind of compact and small, but it's actually very powerful and, and zippy, like really zippy. 750 watts nominal, MXUS is the brand on that. I hadn't really heard of them before, uh, but this, this is also a speed pedelec, okay? So you can get up to 28 miles per hour with pedal assist. That's kind of amazing. And back to the frame flex, you do feel it on those step throughs. That's the trade off when you, you know, you have the ease of, of uh, mounting. This one flexes a little bit less, but there's still a little bit of that happening. Of course, it's a rear heavy design. One of the ways to potentially address this is they have a basket battery combination and it's 48 volts, like 14 amp hours. That's, that's even larger than most normal electric bikes. And that's the smaller add on battery. I was really impressed with that. Um, Bob, can you, if someone wanted just that front basket battery, is that possible? Yes. Yeah, they can have either or. We actually have just a lock box back here, which is an open box that locks to put uh, valuables in. Huh. They can just do a front basket battery. Yeah, I feel like you guys have thought of everything. It's been old, many years in the making. Many years in the making. Make it, yeah. so, and I haven't <laughs> even touched on all the cool things. Check this out. There's a 12 volt, like kind of an old fashioned, almost cigarette lighter adapter charger. And it comes with, um, sort of a key with a keychain that has a USB adapter for that. But if you don't want to use that one, since it's way back here, I mean, a, you, you could have a trunk bag or panniers, you could be charging something, but it's probably more useful if you have your phone or speakers or something up here and check it out. There's another standard five volt USB port right there, right where you really want it. I, I love that. And then I was told that you guys have a cup holder and you have like a speaker holder that comes. Speaker, it's phone a, holder, accessories. Uh, that'll be standard. Oh, you'll get that. That's uh, part of the deal. You'll get the phone holder and the speaker holder. Uh, but it's just kind of interesting to see they built so much around this one platform. Like it's designed to have this basket and you'll notice that the bars turn separately. That's really how you want to do it so that the weight of this isn't sloshing around or if you park it isn't tipping to one side you can take this off and they've got this really cool accessory where the, the front wheel comes off and this attaches to some steering rods and you end up with like a bucket thing in the front. So you turn this into like a front loading cargo bike. Back here, we've got a standard kind of oversized uh, rack. It looks standard, but it actually has a whole bunch of threaded eyelets on top, on the side. You've got the pannier grabber piece at the bottom. It's a little oversized, so make sure if you have the clip on uh, style panniers that they'll actually fit around this tubing. Uh, but there is is space on top and below, uh, you know, uh, good enough, if not beyond that. And you've even got these little rubber pieces in there. So if you aren't using the threaded eyelets, that works. There's this hitch pin thing. So you could do a trailer behind the bike if you wanted to. I mean, it's just kind of on and on. And of course, when you're dealing with a bike that is heavier like this and is higher speed, you need good brakes, 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes from Bengal. Again, a brand I haven't really seen before. It's a little bit new to me, but these these are e-bike specific uh, brake levers with motor inhibitors. They're a little bit oversized, four finger. They've got a little nub at the end so your fingers don't slide off. Like if you're using gloves, adjustable reach on these, all of the stuff you'd come to expect from having, you know, disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes. That's excellent. So many e-bikes, it's like, oh, mechanical disc brakes, good enough. If you can have it, of course you want hydraulic, 
they aren't that much more expensive to service and they just work better but then the price usually goes up and with this bike i just feel like the price is is not bad at all um you even get this cool little look at this it's like a little light so that when you steer it points where you're steering and it's it's also a bell so you know they've kind of thought of everything i feel like we've got a i think it's a, an eight magnet cadence sensor down here at the at the bottom bracket it's the old-fashioned style where there's a piece of plastic and there's a piece of metal and, it, and the magnets pass it and everything it works well enough when i get out there and ride in a bit you'll you'll see it's fairly responsive but then we've got a trigger throttle that overrides at any time and it's really easy to use easy to reach doesn't feel like it's too crowded up here they've even got the extra long cable for the remote button pads so you don't have to take your hand off the grip while riding the display while not removable does swivel and it has that usb piece we were talking about before a lot of different settings in there i'll get to that in a minute as well um yeah and again just the seat post suspension is standard gosh it's like on and on oh and these tires so these are 26 by 2.1 uh, maxis gypsy e-bike specific and they've got silkworm sort of like a kevlar ish liner in there to to keep from getting flats because that's no fun the rear of course you need tools and there's the extra connectors although it's really not too busy it's it's nicely done back here the front has quick release which is you know preferable i guess if you if you have an issue or if you're trying to transport this bike and reduce the weight again heavy taking off the battery taking off the front wheel makes it a little bit easier standard nine millimeter a diameter quick release skewer back there I'm just going to take a, a walk back here and show you the orange one. This is what it looks like without a basket on front, you know, and you've got the lights kind of set up. I think these are sort of pre-slimed tires as well, or tubes, so that, you know, if you do end up with a, a puncture, you can address it on the go, and hopefully it seals long enough to get you home. The tires are a little bit thicker, which is nice, or a little bit larger. It's going to add some cushion, along with this steel fork, a little bit more vibration dampening, steel handlebars. There's an, an interesting mix of steel, and I think you were saying like some stainless steel components or things that are supposed to all hold the, up? All the hardware, every screw and bolt and nut, and the chain is all stainless, awesome. especially down here in the beach weather. Well, yeah, I mean, a beach cruiser, you're actually yeah. out there taking things on. One, one piece I didn't see was a bottle cage, and it was like, well, I don't know if that could weaken the frame. Sometimes when it's actually on the step-through part, you could kick it and stuff. I still like to see it. I would have liked to see bottle cage bosses here. Um, just so you have a folding lock or something. Yes, you've got plenty of other attachment points on the bike. Is there a reason you guys skipped the, the bottle cage bosses or did that come up? Uh, no, it just, it, we had one on our old one, but it just didn't, just to make a cleaner frame. We didn't yeah. put it on there. Yeah, we have the back basket. We have that type of thing. I and the cup think... holder that it comes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, uh, yeah. you've kind of got it. Yeah. yeah it's just it's, something I always right, comment right. on. Cause I'm yeah. like, Oh, you know, right, I got right. my, and, and with the basket, yeah, you could toss your folding lock in there. So, okay. I, in this case, I feel this like actually it actually comes with locks. I and it comes with, yeah, we almost forgot about this right here. And, uh, we, this one just came off the floor. So of the, the stand and I didn't put it on it. We had another, um, yeah, there, there's like, it comes with a six foot combo lock, nothing too sturdy or secure. You might, you might consider upgrading that. Um, the other piece is, I'm glad we're on this side of the bike now. You can see there's the lock to get the battery off. And then there's an integrated charger. It's two amp, which is kind of like average, but uh, you don't have to worry about forgetting the charger. You just pull this cord out and just like a vacuum cleaner, it's kind of like retractable and you can plug it right in. Same thing with the front battery, right? Exactly. Yeah, yep. I can't believe that. And to go through all the UL testing and everything to get this like approved for the United States, over time, I was like, what, what are these little things for? And he was like, well, you know, over time, if there's an issue with uh, the retraction not working, you can kind of loop the cord around like this and um, kind of keep it organized if you want. And I was like, man, you guys are really thinking ahead for, the, for that kind of issue um, to come up and to be able to address it without with something that's sort of elegant. That's an elegant solution. Again, the connection points, all very accessible. I just think it's, I don't know, man. Am I forgetting anything? There's so much to talk about on this bike. Uh, you touched on it pretty good. It's uh, double wall aluminum wheels. Uh, oh, and they're a little bit fatter, right? We, we were just talking there. about that. Yeah. So what does that do for you? They're, uh, they're 32 millimeters. So you really get the sense of stability when you're riding the bike that you don't really feel on other e-bikes. And it's nice to have some more confidence while you're riding the bike as well. And that's, that's the platform of the bike, the wheels, you know? It's yeah. Arguably the most important thing, so. Well, the other piece that's upgraded is 14 gauge spokes on the rear, 13, uh, 14 on the front. 
13. standard yep. 13 on the rear yep. right for the added torque and pressures of the motor and the weight it is a rear heavy bike there's no way around that um you know i guess besides the basket option so there's a lot of like mix and matching going on here uh, what's what's your website now, by the way? Uh, it's real easy, electricbikecompany.com. Okay, sweet. And you're located yeah. Newport here in Beach. Newport Albania. Beach, because yeah. this is like the Newport Beach model, right? Is that where you got the name from? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We used to be the Newport Electric Bike Company, and then uh, we switched it over to just good old electric bike company. Transition, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Maybe it's time to stop gabbing and like go for a little little ride together. Any any other thoughts that you've got, Mark? Before we no, let's uh, hit the bikes. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna take the white one. Yeah, it's my favorite. And to get this on, there's there's like a power switch under the battery yeah, right there, already. and I'm on. And then you come up to the, the cockpit, we press the power button here for a couple seconds, the display comes to life. Four increments on the battery infographic, eh, I'd prefer like 10, but you know, that's that's okay. You get really good range with this with this bike. A uh, little timer up here, assist levels up to five. You can go all the way down to zero if you want. And then I'm trying to remember, I don't think the throttle wa works in zero, does it? Yeah, that, so this is just pedal only, like a bicycle. Um, which, frankly, because you only have one gear, I was like, well, what if you want more gears? And you said you designed it with the dropout so that you could add a seven speed. Yep, dropout has the hitch. It's plumbed for it so we yep. have a, a seven speed option as well. We're working through um, speed. Uh, wattage for the motor, distance, even the temperature up here. If you press the power button over on the button pad, it cycles through. You can see average speed, max speed, some other readouts. I believe if you hold up for a couple seconds, is that what does the backlighting? That's the front headlight and taillight, yeah. Yeah, I should show that. So, you know, the display backlights and then the, the lights. It's a really sunny day, so you might not be able to see them, but I, I just love that. That's built right in. You don't have to remember your lights or worry about not charging them. And then if you hold down for a couple seconds, that's what activates pedal assist. So you can see it says assist right there now. Normally it's just in throttle mode, you know, and you get full power, I believe, from one to five. So you're just, anytime you're not in zero, the throttle works, including with pedal assist. Okay, we got the bikes down on the street. I'm in assist level one, and I'm gonna just use the throttle. I'm just gonna juice it and see what we can do. Oh boy. Really powerful. I'm 15 miles per hour. 20 miles per hour already, just that fast. I really think this is one of the more powerful electric cruisers I've tested. Um, that motor, it's compact, but it, it does a great job. Nice relaxed body position going on, appreciate that. This is, you know, there is a potential for speed wobble happening if you're in those higher speeds, especially up to the 28 mile per hour pedal assist we were talking about. So just, you know, you can kind of wag that tail a little bit if, uh, if you really get this thing jerking around. Um, keep that in mind. That's one of the trade-offs that I always mention with the step throughs. And now I'm gonna do pedal assist and I'm gonna turn up the assist level to five. So you can see how responsive it is. We're going 23, 24, 25. That's, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Whew. <laughs> I need my glasses or something out here. I might uh, film these guys. We can, we can ride together a little bit. You can see a third person. Now that was, I was trying to pedal, but there's only that one gear. And so my cadence was a little too hard and the weight of the bike. That's, you know, it takes some getting used to and I'm really glad they have a nice throttle set up. I wanted to just, yeah, maybe I can follow you and get the third person perspective. Oh boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, I put the camera right on the rack, so hopefully you can see the motor, hear it a little bit, and get some idea of how the frame responds. This is the step through, so it has a little bit more flex. <laughs>
was just adjusting uh, the camera and I bumped that throttle, make sure you turn the bike off or disable it, taking it down to zero when you're moving it because it, it's powerful. And the thing is definitely, uh, definitely powerful. I'm a big fan of the oversized handlebars. Again, the steel uh, fork and the bars, they just, they dampen that vibration a little bit. And when, they, when they're combined with a seat post suspension like this, it's actually pretty high quality. You end up with a much better ride experience. And then the motor inhibitors, that's key. I'm pulling the brake right now and the motor's not doing anything. It's nice to have that kind of control. And I think really important actually at the higher speeds and with increased weight like we see here. Okay, so I'm inside the warehouse here and you could see the lights just flaring. I, I thought that was worth demonstrating. This is the orange one without the basket. And then this is the lock. So you can see it's just got a little holster on the side and a combo lock, nothing too special. And you know, I would probably still bring a U-lock or something, keep an eye on this, but that's gonna be enough for maybe a quick cafe kind of jumping in. So make sure this one's on. Then we come up here and power it up. The light flashed on for a minute there. I'm gonna hold the up arrow. Yeah, you can see it kind of shining a little bit better from inside. Well guys, I really appreciate the time. Yeah. Um, perfect day for this. We were actually out yesterday and it was raining and I was like, well, this would be a good chance to test the fenders. <laughs> but, but that's about it. I think, uh, I think we're good here for the full write up on this. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, sound off if you got this, you got any more questions. I think Bob will chime in on some of those accessories and you know, until next time, ride safe.